Tracy, will you come in here a minute? I've never seen a woman who could spend so much money. Tracy, will you come in here? What does she think I am, J. Paul Getty? Tracy, did you hear me? Did you call me, honey? Yes, didn't you hear me? I'm sorry, honey, I didn't hear you the first two times. Well, then how did you know I called you three times? <laughs> you got me there. Yes, now will you sit down for a minute, Tracy? I want to talk to you about this bill. No, no, not over there. Over here, close to me. Mm, how romantic. I'm not romantic, I'm frantic. Now, I want to discuss this bill with you. End table, $29. Well, you knew about that. I told you a month ago that we need another end table. I know, Tracy. You told me we needed an end table that would cost $29. So I gave you $30 cash. And now I get a bill for $29. Oh, well, that's all right, Doug. Forget about the other dollar. You can owe it to her. Owe it to her? I gave you $30. What happened to it? Well, I saw the same table at Herman's department store, and Paul suggested that I'd save a dollar if I charged it. It's becoming clearer now, and I know I shouldn't ask, but uh, what happened to the $30? Well, if that isn't just like a man. Never even noticed the new sweater. What sweater? Do you like it? <laughs> you bought him instead of an end table? Well, I'd certainly look silly wearing an end table. Well, who says you would? And the sweater was on sale. It was originally $40. Well, we practically stole it for $30. So that's another 10 you owe her. That makes uh, 11. 11 what? Dollars. Get out. Well, I was just about to get a piece of cake. And I'm just about to go for your throat, oh, so you better listen. get out. But listen, brother, Don't, but I... listen to me. Oh, just get on, out. Brother. No. Really on your way, brother. Buster. I'll, I'll, I'll get out. Just out. Peace. Yeah, peace to you. Doug, do you think that was the right way to speak to Paul? No, but I was watching my language. Now, Tracy, we got to get serious. We're in a bad money problem. We're short of money at the moment. Really? Yes. We can't go on spending like this. We've got to cut down our expenses. I mean, I've even had to borrow $500 from the bank to pay my income tax. Oh, Doug, you do that every year. Yes, but some years are better than others. Oh, well, don't I always say that the wife should take the bitter with the better? Yes, I know. Well, when things were better, I didn't have to take the bitter. But now that things are bitter, don't you think I better take the bitter? I think I better. Look, Tracy. Oh, I'm not the kind of a wife that goes around spending money like a drunken sailor. If it'll help you out, I'll even give up this apartment and go and live in one of those old tenement houses. Look, Tracy. I don't mind living in a squalor. I don't mind being poverty-stricken. I'll even cut down on the food. Oh, we'll stick together through thick and thin. I'll let our maid go. I'll do all the work around the house myself. I'll sweat and strain, body all aching and racked with pain. Tote that barge. Lift that bail. Tracy, I'm not asking you to live in poverty. All we have to do is get rid of that little rundown property I have out in the country. I should be able to get about $2,500 for it. Uh, then I better wait till the, you sell that before I ask you for the $198.50 for that suede coat I want to buy. $198.50? Yeah, isn't it? It was $250, but it was marked up. Marked up? You must be marked down. No, it was marked up. That's why I'm getting it so cheap. I have to take it to the cleaners. Tracy, there you go again. We can't spend that much money. I just got through telling you that we have to save our cash, and you, there you go, spending money that we don't have. Why don't you run the house here like I run the office? Oh, you mean you want me to drink martinis every day at lunch? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, what's the use of trying to explain it to you? All I'm saying is that you're not buying that coat. So I'm going to go down to the drugstore and pay your mother's bill. I'll pick up some cigars at the same time. Cigars. There you go. Why don't you give up cigars? If you give up cigars, I'll give up cigarettes. But you don't smoke. There, you see. Tracy? Oh, you can come out, Mother. He's gone. Well, what did he say, Tracy? Are you going to get the coat? Oh, Mother, he said we couldn't afford it. But you know how Doug is every once in a while when he gets on these economy kicks. Oh, and I guess he blames me for it. Oh, no, Mother. Yes, I know. I'm just a bother around here. I don't want to be a bother, but I am a bother. When you get to be my age, a mother is always a bother. Oh, no, Mother, you're no bother. Doug says we just have to cut down a little bit. We all have to help out in some little way. Well, I guess I could get a job as a scrub woman someplace. Oh, no. Well, if it'll help, Tracy, I'll do whatever I can. I, I don't mind getting down on my knees, scrubbing floors. Somebody will come along and help me up. And if not, it's warm in those buildings at night. How long can you lie there before somebody comes along? Maybe 10, 11 hours. Oh, Mother, stop it. It's not that serious. Listen. Maybe I could get a job in a hospital. Well, I've got everything known to medical science. Maybe I could help the nurse.
nurses carry things in and out. Oh, don't worry, Mother. Things will pan out. I'll just forget about buying the coat. Well, now you don't have to do that, Tracy. You know you could borrow the money from a loan company. I saw an ad here in the paper. Here it is, Tracy. Friendly Loan Company. The friendly Loan Company. That's where I went with Paul when he borrowed some money. Well, good. So they know you. It should be easy. And you know, it says here you only have to pay back at $10 a month. Oh, gosh, do you really think I should borrow it? Well, why not, Tracy? Everybody borrows money. Look at the government. Now, the government owes hundreds of billions of dollars, and they're still borrowing money. Hundreds of billions? Just imagine, at $10 a month, that would be, um... Good morning, madam. Just fine. Where's Mr. Seesom? Uh, who? Uh, well, when I was here before, I talked to Mr. Seesom. I'm sorry, madam. I'm fairly new here. I don't remember a Mr. Seesom, but you say you've been here before. Eh? Oh, yes. I've had experience. You're not dealing with a beginner. Huh? Oh, well, the point is that we probably have the record on file. If you'll just give me the name. Paul Sherwood. All right. This is Paul Sherwood. Yes. <laughs> That's your husband's name, isn't it? No, my brother. Your brother. Uh, I don't quite see how he got in here. Well, why shouldn't he get in here? He's a perfectly respectable person. I'm sure he's been out of work for quite a while, but that's no reason. Uh, please, uh, <clears throat> now let's, uh, let's take this over again. Now, you are applying for a loan, is that correct? Yes, sir, $200. $200, I see. And do you have security? Oh, yes. Uh, what uh, kind of uh, security? Oh, the security every girl feels she has when she has a husband. <laughs> Even if the husband isn't doing as well right now as he did before. Because I always say a wife should take the bitter with the better. And just because things are bitter now, it doesn't mean they won't get better. Uh, madam, I don't think you understand. Uh, I'm talking about collateral. Collateral or security, which you can put up in full or in part against the principal sum involved. Oh. Uh, let's take that over again. I want to borrow $200. Uh, look, Mrs. Young, uh, I'll explain what I mean. Do you have a car? A car? Sure mm -hmm. I have. Why, which way are you going? Oh, I thought I'd run up to... Uh, no, I mean, uh, in whose name is the car? Ford. Ford? <laughs> Why are you erasing? Uh, you didn't add... Didn't you ask me the name of the car? Yes. No, I, I, I said, in whose name is the car? I mean, is it yours or your husband's? I guess I never thought of it like that. We both ride around in it. Yes, but it must be in either your name or his. Uh, maybe this will do it. Uh, what are the initials on the registration? Oh, uh, V8. V8. <laughs> Mr. Davis, mm -hmm. about the $200, my mother said your advertisement says, I need two signers. Oh, you want the two-signature loan. Yes, don't you have that? Of course. The Friendly Loan Company is known for its two-signature loans. Both signers must be responsible parties, and if you fail to make any payment promptly, we can call upon either or both co-signers to make full payment of the loan. And, of course, the Friendly Loan Company reserves the right to reject either or both signers before the loan is made. Doesn't sound very friendly. Well, after all, Mrs. Young, <laughs> this is business, you know. And do you say I have to get two people to sign it? Mm. I know one I could get. Oh, no, no. If you want your $200, you have to get two signers. Could I get $100 for one signer? $100 for one. Mrs. Young, do you... Are you deliberate? They're trying to get me... Is your up... collar too tight, Mr. No, Davis? No, no, no. Look, look, Mrs. Young, look. Uh, take this form and get two signers here and here. And they must be responsible people. Mr. Davis, hmm. can I ask you a question? Why me? If I have to get two signatures for a $200 loan, how many signatures does the government have to get? <laughs> government? 
Signatures? Yes. There must be an awful lot for all the billions it borrows. <laughs> people. Have you got that list, Mother? How many have I called? Uh, this one makes... Twelve. Oh, I hope this one will. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wilson. This is Tracy Young. Yes, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. What? Oh, you're fine. Oh, yes, he is. I know, but I've been meaning to call. It's just that... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we miss you, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mrs. Wilson, what I called about. Do you sign notes? Notes? You know, when you want to borrow money from a loan company and they give you a note to get two signers. Well, I got a note from a loan company and they... Oh, really? In a sling? <laughs> well, how about the other? Both of them. Oh, I'm so Sorry, Mrs. Wilson. That sure was a bad break. <laughs> well, I hope it gets better. Yes, I will. Goodbye, then. Gee, broke both her arms. Oh, really? My goodness, that's marvelous. What's marvelous? Holding the telephone between her teeth. <laughs> I wonder if she... Oh, well, scratch Mrs. Wilson. Somebody has to. No, I must write you off the list. Friends. Huh. Don't make me laugh. I don't know who my friends are and who won't sign notes. <laughs> Did you want me, Mr. Young? Want you? No, but you've got the job here. What can I do? Oh, by the way, Miss Anderson, has Mr. Norris been trying to get in touch with me? Douglas, I want to talk to you. Oh, hello, Mr. Norris. Who did you ask me has been calling you? Nobody, Miss Anderson. Goodbye. You can go back to your desk. Oh, Mr. Norris. No, he hasn't called. Well, if he does, you just tell him I'm busy with Mr. Norris. Now, goodbye. Yes, yes. Oh, that girl. My boy, I want to talk to you about that little piece of property. No, sir, she's my wife's cousin. I can't get involved. <laughs> no, no. I mean that real estate you own. Oh, yes, I'd almost forgotten about it. You mean the summer place I have? If you can dignify it with that name. Oh. Now, Mr. Norris, it happens to be a very nice little place, and if you're really anxious to have it, I can let it go for, say, $2,500. You can, huh? Mm -hmm. I'll give you $1,500. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's forget about it, huh? I mean, Tracy and I would think you're building it on you the summer. Give you $1,500 cash. Cash? Well, who needs cash? I was just doing... 1500 cash, I got it right here. I'm sorry, Mr. Norris, I really don't want to sell it, and if you don't, I don't need the money, and... Okay, I'll give you 1750 <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Norris, really, if I needed the Everybody money... Everybody perhaps... can use money. Well, not me, I just happen to have a lot of cash lying around. All right, then, $2,000. You drive a hard bargain, I'll make out a check. You know, I wouldn't take $2,499.99. Oh, yes, Miss Anderson? Um, oh, yes, there's a phone call for you, Mr. Norris. Oh. All right, just a minute, Douglas. I'll take it right here. Hello? Hello? Got a bad connection here. Hello, Mr. Norris. Oh, yes, who's this? This is Mrs. Young. Do you sign notes? What's that? I'm trying to borrow some money from a loan company because I need some cash right now. I've got to buy a coat, and my husband says we can't afford it. Oh, he can't, huh? No. So if I come down to your office, will you sign the note for me? Well, this is most interesting. By, by all means, come down to my office. I'll be delighted to hear more about this. Oh, thank you, Mr. Norris. Goodbye. Well. <laughs> well, what? You do drive a hard bargain, don't you? <laughs> Look, uh, Mr. Morris, let's uh, just forget about it. I mean, you don't seem to be interested in... I don't really want to sell. I, I don't need the cash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess you don't. <laughs> no, I guess I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> oh, sir. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it some other time. <laughs> Goodbye, Douglas. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Norris. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what I'm laughing about. <laughs> Miss 
Miss Anderson, who was that who called Mr. Norris a few minutes ago? Mr. Young, are you inferring that I listen to other people's telephone conversations? Yes. Well, I don't see how you surmise that. After all the years I spent here, if that's what you surmise about me, then I must say I find your surmise completely surmissable. Surmise, that's the word for the day. Learn a word a day by using it every way. It's in the newspaper every morning. I know. And how you can surmise I would listen to a telephone conversation makes me most submissible. Well, it's definitely sub-something. And what's more, Mr. Young? Look, subhuman, all I thought was you might accidentally have recognized the voice of the person who called because I had him almost sold. He'd come up with $2,000 and was ready to go for the full $2,500. You know, I, I can't understand who was who might have called to change his whole attitude toward that deal. <laughs> And so I finally thought of you, Mr. Norris. All you have to do is sign this note where the X mark is. Yes, now just a minute. Mrs. Young, not so fast. You're borrowing money from a loan company? The friendly loan company. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, there's the note. Uh, just sign where the X mark is. Two hundred dollars. Why are you borrowing the money? Oh, for a coat I want to buy. Why doesn't Mr. Young give you the $200? Oh, he wouldn't do it, Mr. Norris. Now, if you'll just sign there. Wouldn't or couldn't? Well, Doug says we ought to try and cut down on expenses. Ah, then. He is up against it. Mr. Norris, just sign the note where it says... I asked you if Douglas is up against it. All I want to know is why your husband doesn't want to give you the money. Because he's short of cash? Short of cash? Oh, no. He told me he just borrowed $500. That's plenty of cash. Oh, he borrowed money from the bank. Oh, not only that, but we've got some little rundown property that's only worth about $1,500 that he's going to sell somebody for $2,500. Isn't that a guess? <laughs> yes, that's a guess. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. What are you doing downtown? Just fine. Well, that's good. How are you feeling? Oh, I just came down to get Mr. Norris to sign a note for a loan. Yeah, well, Tracy, I've got an awful lot of work to do, and i got a lot in my mind. And besides that, I'm just getting around to Mr. Norris to sign a loan? Everybody's collar's so tight today. Tracy, please, what did you do? Oh, I didn't do anything. He didn't sign it. Don't worry. But I've been telling him we've got so much cash on hand. Oh, I did, too. You did, huh? Oh, Tracy, you did? Well, that's good, but... Look, I'm afraid to ask this, but what did you say to him? Oh, I said you had plenty of cash. I told him you borrowed $500 from the bank. <laughs> well, if that isn't a coincidence, hold that color. You know that coat I wanted to buy? It's just the same shade green as your face. <laughs> that's it. Now you've got it the shade of the lining. Tracy... Don't you understand? I've been telling Mr. Norris I don't need cash. Then you tell him we can't afford $200 for a new coat, and I almost had him bluffed, and then you did it. Oh, I did it? You certainly did. Can I do something to fix it up, honey? No, 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 no. Stay away from him. No, wait a minute. Maybe you can go to him. Better still, I'll have him come here, and we'll tell him it was just a gag. Just laugh it off, you see? Laugh it off? Yeah, it was just a joke. You didn't want him to sign any note. It was just a gag. A gag? That's right, a gag. It was just a little game you were playing. Do you understand? I don't think so. Anyway, listen, I'm going to have Mr. Norris come over oh, here. Yes, I want to see you. Oh, Mr. Norris. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Norris, uh, this is really funny. Now, who did you say you played the game on, Tracy? Game? You know, the game you called, uh, you play called uh, Sign the Note. Oh, I get it. Yes, sign the note. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Well, Tracy was telling me about a game she was playing this afternoon called Sign the Note. And she goes around to all our friends and tells them that we need money and makes them believe that, they, that we need the money, and then she gets them to sign the note. Who'd you play it on, Tracy? Mr. Norris. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Norris. That's a good one on you, Mr. Norris. I didn't think you'd fall for an old gag like that. <laughs> what do you mean, gag? She told me you said you had to cut down expenses. Well, yes, that's the gag, Mr. Norris. Oh, Tracy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did she tell you she needed it for? A new dress? No, it was a coat. Oh, a coat. oh, it's a beautiful coat. Make that color again, honey. 
Oh, she's so funny. What does she need with a new coat? <laughs> she told me you didn't have any cash. Oh. No cash. Oh, he's got lots of cash, oh, haven't you, Doug? Cash? We've got cash lying all around the house. <laughs> we got cookie jars stuffed with cash. I need cash. <laughs> but she said you borrowed the money from the bank. What? <laughs> borrowed money. <laughs> yes. In fact, I just came up here to get him to give me that $200 for the coat I want to get, didn't I, Doug? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> oh, give it to me, honey. <laughs> what? $200. Give it to me. 200 You've got it in your pocket. Just watch him take it out, Mr. Norris. That's right. See? There it is. $200. Right. Well, goodbye, Mr. Norris. I'm going to get that coat now. Bye, honey. Well, goodbye. Look, Mr. Norris. That's the shade of the coat. <laughs> Well, when Mr. Norris saw me hand Tracy $200 in cash, he figured I was rolling in dough. So he met my price on the property. In fact, because of Tracy's little trick, I got an extra $500 out of him. So I couldn't stay mad. But Tracy wouldn't be Tracy without one more surprise. Hey, did you get the coat? Yeah, but I don't like it. Well, how come? Oh, it doesn't look right on me. I'll show you. Oh, okay. oh, it's a little too big and masculine. Here, you try it on. Oh, honey, that's the, that's the coat I wanted. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's the nicest $200 I ever swindled out of oh, you. Well. <laughs> Am I going to get a kiss? Hey, be careful. Well, Mother's not here. Well, I don't care about your mother, but you're going to wrinkle my coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 